All right, join me today, cutting bifold doors. I'm gonna show you some tricks, some tips, how to make life a little easier. All right, please join us today. Keep it a secret home and garden. If you like the videos, please like them, share them, turn on your notifications for future home and garden videos. First thing I'd like to show you today is how I'm utilizing my table saw to stabilize the door. What I've done here is I've taken the uh, fence and I pin the door between the fence and the saw blade right here. The saw blade is raised. So because I don't have a helper handy, I can, the door is stabilized and doesn't want to flip flop off the table. So there we go. Step one and cutting the door to stabilize it. Step two, replacing the saw in here. Now, some people will use a speed square. I have my line marked there on the bifold door. And some people will lay a speed square on this side of it and hold it with one hand to get a nice straight cut. But I've been doing this long enough that I can freehand it and have a cut that will be satisfactory to myself. Um, if you don't, you could always clamp on. I'll link this back to another video where I clamp. Clamp on a board and you can use that as a straight edge if you don't have the experience with running the saw. I don't want you to hear the noise, so I'm gonna go ahead and spare you that. And as you see, we've already, I've already done a sample cut to see if my blade was sharp, and I like my blade. And I've taken out the plug, here's the plug. See, what they do is they only give you a little plug that's maybe a little better than an inch. Now, if they were wor worried about us installers, they'd put a nice two by four plug down here. So you'd have an inch and a half plug, and then you could cut off this much and still not have to re-block the door. But I'm gonna show you today how we're gonna re-block the door. We will cut the door and re-block it. As with this situation, I'm cutting quite a bit off the door. I'll show you down here, I'm cutting this much off the top. All right, that's a good inch and a half off the top. So I'll lose my blocks and I'm cutting this much off the bottom. All right, so it's quite a bit to cut off. So they have to be re-blocked so they'll support the pins. There's your pin location, your pivot pin. So we'll re-block them. I'm gonna show you today how to do that. The block has been removed. Now in the old days, what I would do when the doors had more integrity, were built with more integrity, I would actually peel off this veneer laminate and reuse this same block. But because it's just glorified cardboard now, I don't like to do that. I'm gonna show you how to cut new blocks using two by lumber. I have a two by two and I will cut and put real lumber back in here that I feel has much more strength, more, once you drill a hole in it, it's gonna have a lot more grabbing power and strength than this uh, glorified MF. MDF, MFD, whatever you want to call it, you're effed. So I just like to uh, use real wood. Call me a dinosaur, but that's the way I like it. Stay tuned. You're going to see some, some wood. Now, there's a couple of different ways you could do this. You could take and take your table saw and set the depth blade just right and strip, strip these uh, Luon panels, whatever, these fiberboard it used to be Luan. Now it's just the outside jacket. You could strip these off with your blade and save this block and reuse it. But like I said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set, I've established this is an inch and an eighth wide. So I'm going to rip it out of a two by four. I'm going to do that right now with the table saw. I'm trying to save you guys the noise. So how I'm feeding it through the saw, I have a block of wood so that I'm not going to chop my fingers off. Safety measure. And if you want to get real safety, you probably should put the guard on the saw, but I like to work better without it. Don't call OSHA. Don't report me. But this is the way Bubba rolls. So there you go, running it through the table saw the quiet way. I've uh, laid a bead of glue on my wood and also in the groove. All right. And so what we're going to do now is slip. I'm going to slip my wood in the groove. 
All right. And spank it in. Typically, if I didn't have the camera, I'd be probably just use a hammer to tap it in. I'd break out the Bubba hammer. But there we go. We got it slipped in. What we're going to do is get my Porter Cable 18 gauge nailer. Really doesn't matter what brand you do. Porter Cable is a nice brand. I love my uh, rigid brand tools also. Those are great tools. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to throw a few pin nails in this. And I'll throw a couple in the other side. And there you have it. The next step will be drilling the pin. All right. Drilling the pin. Now what I've done is I've taken the block that I removed that I've showed you. And actually I'm making sure to make sure I lined up the grain. Okay, I lined up the grain, matched up the grain. So I know it's just my double check, double safe system that I'm, this is exactly the one I cut off and took it away. So this way I'm drilling the pivot. I'm gonna use this hole. If you could camera, camera person come around here. I'm using the pivot hole, the existing pivot hole as a jig. This is my jig to mark exactly where this pivot goes. Now I'm just gonna spot it. That's just a spot where it goes because it's, I need a bigger bit. I don't have the bigger bit. I'm gonna do that later. But now it's marked so I can drill that on the job site. I'm driving this, this door is going up to Gladwood, Michigan. And I'm just pre-cutting it and getting it now because whoever drywalled the opening drywalled it way too small. So I've really had to cut a lot off the doors. But there you go. That's how you re-block a bifold door to glue it, nail it, re-block it. And so it'll still have enough integrity to support I really don't recommend bifold doors. I recommend a lot of people say, is there an alternative? Yes, there is an alternative. You can buy pre-hung doors like pantry doors with a bullet. They have a bullet uh, stop and they're pre-hung. You can have pre-hungs that open up and a three-year-old could swing on the doorknob and not tear down a pre-hung. The problem with bifolds, a three-year-old will take these off their pivot. They're really cheesy. They're everywhere. Everybody's got them but it's not your only choice. Keep in mind, you can buy pantry pre-hung doors and you'll have some real, some quality, some something that'll take the abuse of a three-year-old. Bam, bam, bam. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Remember, like the videos, please share them and join us at Keep It A Secret Home and Garden. I have mini playlists, t tomatoes, pumpkins, watermelons, and Bubba's Home Fix-It Tips. All right, well, thank you. Thank you very much.